All right, everybody. On today's episode of Locked on Avalanche, it's pretty much about one thing, and that's the Hart Trophy. And we're going to do this. It's like an updated episode. We met with Adam Denker from Locked on Lightning a couple months ago. Let's do that again and where things stand in the Hart Trophy race. New episode of Locked on Avalanche coming at you. You're Locked on Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Locked On Avalanche Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for tuning in, making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. Make sure you're following us on our social media outlets, LOP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter, X, Locked on Avalanche on Instagram and threads, questions, comments, concerns, and opinions, Locked on Avalanche at gmail.com. And make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe and get notified when a new show goes live. And while you're subscribing to things, subscribe to our subtext. Link to that is in the show notes below. And when you do, you chat with Kyle and I one-on-one. We get your opinions on everything Avalanche related, which we share on this very podcast, uh, which we will do momentarily because we sent this question out to our people in in subtext world of uh and we'll get with adam here in a minute we recorded a crossover and we're going to play that in a few minutes um but we threw it out there and and trying to be as objective as possible (laughs) because i know you know lines in the sand have been drawn and if you're an avalanche fan I would think 99% of the people think it's Nathan McKinnon. And if you're a Lightning fan, I'm sure it's 99% think that it's Kucherov. And that's all well and good. But I think there's a better conversation to be had on why it's one of these two guys. So I wanted to get some uh, you know, feedback from the, the subtext people on what they thought. But before we get you know to the whole thing with Adam, where, where, where do you think? When last time we met with Adam was a couple months ago. It was like these two guys. And where do you think things stand a couple months later? You know what? I'm glad we're having this conversation right now because Adam's not right here. And we could say this. It, we're, we're Avalanche fans. We're all friends. We're family. <laughs> I didn't think Kucherov would keep this up this long. I thought this the question would kind of fade away and Nathan McKinnon would keep doing what he's doing and Kucherov would kind of fade away, especially after the trade deadline. It would The production would tail off, but he hasn't stopped. And I'll uh, stick taps to him. That's awesome. That You love to see it. I love this, like, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa home run race mm-hmm. every night in hockey. It's it's so much fun to watch. So congratulations, Kucherov. I love it. But yep. I, I really want this, like, the want, the fan in me wants this to be Nathan McKinnon's year. But it's hard to say anything negative about what Kucherov is doing. No, he's having a great season. Yeah. And and we get into that with Adam. It's, it's you know, the, the the fan base is kind of like attacking the other one. And it's like, that's that's you, you kind of look silly when you're doing that because both of these guys are clearly having a, a great season and try to minimize yeah. what the other one is doing just because he doesn't play for their team doesn't make any sense. So, but uh, I, I didn't think Kucherov would ever like slow down. Well, there was a moment where I thought he was coming back down to earth. That wasn't that long ago. And then he 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 just fires it right back up again. So, yeah. and 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 the big, the big thing in, in lightning circles is, uh, you know, he's he's carrying such a heavy load, and that's a reason why you're thinking, like, can he continue to do that? Because the Avalanche just seem to be cruising right now. It hasn't always been easy for the Avalanche either, uh, but right now things are going well and they're just firing on all cylinders. He's had to make sure, Kucherov, I'm saying, it, he's been, you know, the guy game in and game out, and he's he's held up his end of the bargain. So it's it's been impressive to watch on both of these guys easily. Yeah, so. it, like to pull in three or four point nights for Kucherov on the regular. That's impressive. Sure. Um, so let's get to the subtext stuff now, and then uh, we'll we'll have our our crossover that we did with Adam talking about it. Um, I'll jump right in here, and this is from Joe. It says the award clearly goes to McKinnon. Uh, if it's a points argument, even if Kucherov has more, look at the streaks Mac has been on. It's unreal. Not to mention how he makes everyone around him better and isn't one to whine to the refs about nonsense. But he did last game. <laughs> yeah. I will say, but I'll say this: you haven't seen him doing that a lot this year. He's kind of been keeping his cool for most of the season. He was not a happy camper 
that last game against uh, Pittsburgh. Um, without Landy around, the team needs a strong voice, and they clearly have that with McKinnon. Just watch those comeback games or even some of the bad losses. You can o- almost always count on McKinnon to be the one in the driver's seat. McKinnon, 2024. Oh, he's running for president now. Is this a you McKinnon know, ticket? Let's do that. You know, Joe brings up a great topic. Like, we yeah. haven't talked about who's the leader of this team in quite some time. Like, who's feeling that that quote-unquote Landy spot? Yeah. I think it's quietly closed up. I feel like it is – It's it's a battalion. Like it's a, uh, it's a, it's yeah. a brigade that, well, that question came, you're right. It has, it did come up a lot. Um, and I think at the beginning of the season, everybody was saying it's Makar. I was not that guy I, from the beginning. I was saying, if it's not Landis Gog, it's Nathan McKinnon. He doesn't do it the way that Landis Gog does. He's way Landis Gog's vocal. I'm not saying he's not, but McKinnon is, is 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 maybe a little bit more vocal in a I'm going to like reprimand you type of way where Landis Scott just expects you to act that way. Yeah, so Landis Scott can be like that 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 evil stepmother just looks at you and you know you did something wrong. Where McKinnon will yell at you and tell you exactly what you did wrong and make sure you do it right. You so, don't want to uh, break Landis Scott's heart, but and you don't want McKinnon to break your leg. <laughs> exactly exactly so no i think like the way that the season has gone people are like yeah mckinnon is leader of this team i always thought he was he, w- he was a leader so it's not no surprise but you're right that that conversation has really kind of gone away for as the season has gone on um vargar vargar is a huge uh at a denker fan so he, he was looking forward to this he says i think if mcdavid passes or ties kucherov or mckinnon for the scoring title it's his trophy to lose. The writers love McDavid, Crosby, and Bedard. Uh, honestly, Kucherov has done more with less, and if Tampa makes the playoffs and he is within a handful of points of McKinnon, Kucherov should win. I, I respect the honesty here, uh, Vargar. says, look at the depth of the two teams. The Avs are the better team, but being arguably the best player on the best team doesn't make you the MVP. I go into a lot of you froze up there but i yeah chris does go into this conversation and we we dive into like the nomenclature behind the heart trophy itself and we talk about mcdavid and so that's that's stay tuned for that conversation Mm -hmm. but i absolutely agree with what varga is saying when it comes to mcdavid if it does become one of those where he ties honestly i'd say mckinnon or kucherov because of how the oilers started this year to where McDavid, if he catches all the way up to where he is now and missing so much time at the beginning, it's an impressive mm-hmm. story. It's impressive. And and I, I like like you said, like I, I do talk about why I don't think so much weight is on the scoring title as it could be on the things that Nathan McKinnon is doing and toying mm-hmm. with Wayne Gretzky. So we, we, we get into that. Uh, Madam Battleax, uh, she goes, hey, Adam, I just wanted you to know that I'm drowning here in Sarasota, Florida. Yeah. I love that Madam Battleaxe is in Florida and is not a Lightning fan. Go Madam Battleaxe. Because uh, she's in Bolt's country. I am McKinnon all the way for the heart. If last night didn't show it, then I don't know what will. McKinnon just keeps getting better year after year and shows everyone why he is valuable to our team. McKinnon is in just about every uh, conversation regarding great hockey players. How is it that he hasn't earned the heart? Um, I think Kucherov is an obvious nomination, but as far as winning the heart, it's McKinnon this year. And if it's not, well, then the abs nation has rock solid evidence that the NHL don't want him to have it for some reason at all. And I will buy into that conspiracy theory, Madam Battleax. I will absolutely buy into that. If he doesn't win it this year, you're saying the NHL doesn't like the avalanche. That's Mm. no, come on. It's not that I don't think they don't like them. I just don't think they pay attention to them. I, I think they have, you know, bigger fish that they'd rather go catch. And, and that's in like the bigger markets. And, you know, guys like who play for the Avalanche, they, even, even Tampa has that same argument. Adam, Adam mentions that too. Yeah. It's an interesting topic. Um, Easton, I think if we're really objective, it's a toss up. Cooch is carrying Tampa to the playoffs, kicking and screaming. I don't know what their injury status is uh, besides Sergeyev. Uh, McKinnon has carried the avalanche without Sammy, Val, and Lekkonen, uh, with Georgie being so inconsistent to still be in contention for the top of the West. 
They're both having career years. Objectively aside, I just really, really, really want him to win being McKinnon. And I think that's where we're all at. If McKinnon yep. had already won one, I think, and, and I don't say this with Adam, but I said it in the, the first crossover we had with him. I do think that comes into play here in some capacity. I think some of the writers will be like, it's ridiculous he hasn't got one yet. He should have had one already. And I think that if, I don't know, but maybe there's a writer or two out there who says like, man, these guys are so evenly matched this year. I'm going to go give it to the guy who doesn't have one yet. Yeah, That could very well happen. Wouldn't surprise me. I kind of want Nathan McKinnon to get it out of the way so we get back to focusing on the cup because this is nice thing for Nate to have. But once he gets it, we could go back to focusing on the cup. And honestly, if Nate had one by now, I'd say give it to Kucherov. Let's get back to business. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't matter as much. No. I think Avalanche fans really want it to happen because it's their guy and he hasn't gotten one yet. So, uh, and last but not least, we got Tanya. Uh, she says, I missed the power ranking show that I did with Adam back in the day for uh, Locked on NHL. Um, so she loves when we do these crossovers. Anyway, I'm not a big fan of the awards. They rarely are given the way I think they should be. Well, yeah, like she's right there because – that's already happened to to uh, Nathan McKinnon when it comes to the heart. Um, I'll tell you what I do want to know. I just learned that Nathan McKinnon won the Lady Bing in 2020. How did I miss that? Yeah, he did. It's It may be a little bit of a, a footnote. And I do – I remember at the time feeling like he wasn't going to win the heart that year. Like you, you knew that. So uh, I, I kind of felt like that was their little like carrot that they gave him because he had a great year and they didn't want him to walk away empty handed. So they gave him the lady Bing of all things. And then the next year he throws a, a, a bucket in someone's face. Yeah. And two points, uh, Tanya. Yes. The NHL does not agree with common sense. That's why we all scratch our heads when it comes to awards. Mm -hmm. And 2020 was just a wacky year altogether. Very, so weird one. Very weird. Um, all right. So that wraps it up for the subtext people. If you want to get in on that, definitely uh, hit the link down in the show notes and uh, subscribe to that because you'll get your comments like that and your opinions read on this episode. All right. Let's get in our first break. And when we come back, we will have this crossover that we uh, just recorded with Mr. Adam Denker from Locked on Lightning and all the reasons why Nathan McKinnon deserves to win this art trophy. We'll do that next. All right, first we're going to hear from Sleeper, and it's almost a half, well, it's beyond the halfway point. It's almost time for playoff hockey. We've got 11 games left here, Kyle. And, and we've, so. had all, we've had all season to find a better app for daily fantasy sports. I mean, come on, we're in tomorrow. Have you been able to do that yet? No. No, still. So I'm giving up hope that you will, because you won't. Why? Because Sleeper is the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network, the number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey. Because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. So we're getting a, a double dipper here. You gave us um, uh, Drew Wen. I said Lekkonen because they're both going up against their former team. Give them a bonus one for their daily fantasy uh, player for the Avalanche. I almost said Lekkonen so you could take Drew in and we could be double right. Just my, yeah. But no, you know what? I think, and in the spirit of this crossover with Adam, I think it's time for Ross Colton to get back on the board. I like that pick. I like that one very much. So all you got to do is pick whether studs like Ross Colton will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. So use the promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That code is locked on NHL. See sleeper terms are used for details and locational availability. All right, let's get back to the episode and the crossover with Mr. Adam Denker. All righty. Thank you for joining us back here on Locked On Lightning. And for our second segment on today's episode, we got the guys from Locked On Avalanche, Kyle Sullivan and Chris Masilli of Locked On Abs coming to talk about 
who's better, you know, or or who's at the top Come of on. the Hart Trophy standings? <laughs> is it Kucherov or is oh, it God. Kucherov? Well, we're going to talk about <laughs> Kucherov and, you know, that guy out west, Nathan McKinnon. So, guys, first of all, thank you for joining us here Absolutely. on Locked on Lightning. Hope, uh, hope the West has been treating you well since we last spoke. It looks like you better. guys are handling business out there in your division. And uh, we just came back from a West Coast trip, so we know how tough it is out there. Mm-hmm. What 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 would the record go? Uh, you know, the, <clears throat> we were, I believe, five and one, so not bad. Ooh, Our only loss okay. came to uh, against LA. So, all right, games against Vegas, San Jose, Anaheim. You know, so I think bad. right now, I mean, well, the Avs are are winners of of nine straight, um, tops in the league, by the way. Uh, and you guys, what, what's your last, I mean, your last 10, you're seven, one and two. So both teams right now doing pretty well. Are we going to see another one, Mr. Denker? Are we going to see another Stanley cup final of these two teams? Well, that I, I'm not going to give a definitive answer because, you know, we we're missing out on Sergeyev and I feel like that's the, uh, the mm-hmm. last, last mm-hmm. piece we need. We might be, uh. I, I'm sure a lot of Avs fans are already rolling their eyes about this just because, you know, we, we get to pull out another eight and a half million dollars at the playoffs uh, for, for another no, no, no. cup run. And, it, it's and, yeah, okay. I mean, it's okay. What, what, what Vegas is doing, everybody else is is okay with in, in my book. So go ahead and do it. Uh, you're, you're nowhere you're nowhere near touching Vegas. I think Kyle's would be on that one. Yeah. I, 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 can't, I can't hear you, Kyle. Turn, turn your mic on. Yeah, I, I guess that's the uh, the bright side. At least we're not okay. Vegas, uh, by the way, who we've beaten <laughs> twice this year. Thank you very much. Thank you and, very much. I and, appreciate um, that but yeah, here, you know, we're talking about obviously our top two guys. And, uh, you know, we, I, I feel like things I, I think we could both mutually agree without being biased as to things have gone up and down since our last talk. I think we last spoke in maybe January, was it? Maybe a little later than that. Somewhere but right. I feel like for generally across the league the conversation has shifted i feel like more people were talking about mckinnon back then now with with the stretch in the last couple of months that kucherov has had it it looks like this is starting to become a little bit more of an even race um would you guys agree or not not agree with that uh kyle I'll let you go uh first of all because i know chris yeah. likes to talk way too still much can't, so. still can't hear kyle I can't. Yeah, Kyle's got to fix it. Right, so, Chris, why don't you go since Kyle? <laughs> well, see, see if you can fix it, and then, um, <clears throat> excuse me. As far as, yeah, I think it's it's a it's a pretty close race. Um, I think where you're, uh, there you go, Kyle. Yeah, I think I think, uh, and I'll let Kyle uh, take yeah, it away. It, but I, I do. I think it's I think it's a close race. I'll have more to say, but Kyle, please go. No, yeah, it's inter- it's interesting to watch Kucherov do what he's doing because he's. He's currently sitting in the lead with one less game played, which is interesting. And it's a fun little back and forth between Nathan McKinnon and Kucherov all year long. It's fun to watch, but it's interesting to see if how it'll play out towards the end. It's I, I'm respecting everything Kucherov is doing, and it's honestly one of those anything you could do, I could do better kind of deals. And it's a race down to the end. But Nathan McKinnon, we, we talked about this the last time. Nathan mm-hmm. McKinnon, it's he has a complete team around him. You were talking earlier when my mic wasn't working about the LTIR that you get to take advantage of in the playoffs. Vegas is utilizing 21 million. Tampa Bay will do eight and a half. That's fine. We can live with that. But the Avalanche are currently sitting on a top to bottom complete team. Oh, you're buzzing, Kyle. Fix that. (laughs) Fix it. (laughs) There we go. But... (laughs) <laughs> As I was saying, now how how Vegas won the cup last year is currently how Colorado is constructed, and Nathan McKinnon is doing this just kind of because he can. Like he's currently sitting on that that home point streak, which is also an incredible feat. Like Kucherov is doing this because this is the one real, sh- this is a shining spot for Kucherov in his career. But Nathan McKinnon is doing this with another gear or two if he wanted to i mean i first of all i get i get kind of enjoyment out of like the the fan bases going at at each other and it's like 
what one guy is doing, the other guy's not even close. The other guy's not even in, in the conversation. It's ridiculous. It, it, this is a, a this still when we did talk last time, uh, Adam, it, it was a two headed race then. I think it's a still a two headed race now. I think just the third place person has been replaced, and that is now Connor McDavid. But I think Connor McDavid is a distant third right now between these two guys. And it, it, it's, I, I don't, I don't take part in that. Um, you know, McKinnon, because he's on the team that we root for, is so far ahead of Kucherov. What these guys are doing is both heart worthy. So wh where do you break things down? I don't, sure, it, it is, is who has the most points in the equation? Sure. Is it all of the equation? No, it's not. So I, it doesn't, like, these guys are going to finish 1-2, likely, and they'll be close. It's it's going to be close. So I don't think that plays as much of a part. For for McKinnon, Kyle touched on on one of the records he's going after with the home, the, the home point streak, which is in his grasp. That 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 very well could happen. Now it, it's it, it 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 leading up to where it is now. Thirty four out of forty one home games, in every home game he's scored so far. So he's got that record on the horizon. Even if he doesn't get it, he's now officially in second place to that. Only to guess who Gretzky. The other record that he has along with Gretzky is the he's got two streaks of eighteen points of 18 game point streaks, two in one season. The only other guy to do that is Wayne Gretzky. So, uh, so what's, what, what is more impressive? Like just you led the league in points or you have, you are tied with Gretzky. You're the only other one to do something Gretzky has done. And if you beat him in something that he he's the only one to do it, that it, I'm sorry, that's where things where, where voters will look at that and say like, okay, yeah, everybody's going to lead the league and scoring every season that's how ju that just that that statistically works but what he's doing for for those two categories to be tied with Gretzky in in the 18 game point streak twice and to maybe overtake him and if he does that if he gets a, a point in all 41 home games that cannot be broken unless you add more games to the schedule it's impossible for that streak to be broken and I, I, I guess the only way to do it is if you add more uh, home, uh, or more home games to the schedule, or if you include the postseason too. So uh, it, it it's great on both sides what what they're doing, but that's why I give the the edge to McKinnon is because he's going for records. It's not just this season points. Yeah, I I, I see it from that perspective, and and I. 100% agree that, you know, you have to take the historical significance sure. uh, into consideration. But the way that we all here on the Tampa side look at it is that Kucherov has basically accounted for half of the points mm -hmm. that the Lightning have scored all season long. That's pretty um, crazy. <laughs> and the general consensus is that if you – take out Nikita Kucherov and you put in just an average forward let's call him player x so we're not dis we're not we're not re disrespecting anybody um mm -hmm. the general consensus is that the lightning are not even anywhere near to a playoff spot and you know you chris yeah. chimed in on the tweet that I put up the other day, which I didn't even bother <laughs> to respond to talking about how Braden point was in the lineup and the light in the, the night was ruined, even though the lightning ended up yeah. winning that game. Braden point I, is not lost on us that he is having a phenomenal season, but at the same time, we don't have that great season out of Braden point. If Nikita Kucherov isn't on the ice doing what he's doing, because we all know, and you guys have seen it firsthand, when this guy's on, it opens up the door for everybody else on this team. And when he's not on the ice, which is, thank thank goodness, this year has been very few times, uh, it, it it's a completely different team. You go from a team that is, at times, looking like one of the best teams in the league with 86 on the ice to a team that almost looks like they're trending down towards a lottery spot. Hmm. And you take into account the fact that this team didn't start off with Vasilevsky, and then when he came back, he hasn't really played up to the expectations that we expected of him, even though, you know, 
he started to trend upwards as of late, but still, I mean, that coupled with defense and having to really score five goals a night in order to give your chance, give yourselves a chance to win. Nikita Kucherov, when he is going back to back games with four points or or more, um, and that is just so the Lightning could have a remote chance of winning. That that, in my opinion, and I think in a lot of Lightning fans. Uh, minds shows that you know he is the most valuable player to his team and and we're not disregarding what McKinnon has done sure uh it, it's just you know when you go out when we look at the the avalanche quite frankly we look at you guys as a little bit more well off given you know it, how big of the drop off would be if you don't have your guy as opposed to our guy oh uh, uh, Kyle fix yourself again um <laughs> I, I, and, and I'll I, I, I'm interested to hear what Kyle has to say on this too, because um, I oh. have. Go ahead, go ahead. I, I have some thoughts on it as well, but go ahead. Hey, Adam <clears throat> and Chris, you both are touching on honestly the big question and the elephant in the room when it comes to this discussion: the definition of the nomenclature around the Hart Trophy. What is valuable? What it defines yeah. you as a valuable player in the league? Is it the McKinnon esque chasing Gretzky and these records and the incredible season he's having? Or without Kucherov, where would the Lightning be? What is the definition of valuable in the league? Like, without Kucherov on the Lightning right now, having this type season, where would Tampa Bay be sitting? And without this amazing... Every record that Gretzky has has always been claimed as untouchable. Nobody will ever... Well, McKinnon is chasing down a couple right now, currently. Is that not valuable? (laughs) Where do the votes lie? Because honestly, it's a win-win... And there is no wrong answer because both are having incredible seasons for the teams they play for. Yeah, and I think <clears throat> that's always the age-old question, right? Like, what 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 is the meaning of value? And and if, if that's the case, Connor McDavid wins this every single year. He is the most valuable player in the league, hands down. <clears throat> so, you know, but but that's not where the the trophy in 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 the, in the meaning of MVP is in any sport. It's who's having the best season. That that's really what it has come down to. And these two guys are really kind of, in my opinion, heads and, heads and shoulders above everybody. But I want to ask you, Adam. Like, did did, are, did you say that Braden Point is only having the good season he's having because of Kucherov? Like, like, like Braden Point is is I don't want to say riding the coattails, but he is benefiting from how well Kucherov is playing. Well, I'm I'm not discounting because, the fact that he. <clears throat> We all know how talented Point is, but right, and and I'm sure that he would be having a good season statistically wise if sure. there wasn't a Kucherov next to him. But it, it can't be discounted that if he was playing alongside this guy as opposed to in a different situation or you know what whatever. I mean, a lot right. of people kind of look at how Panarin and Zibanejad and Kreider are out in New York. You know how those guys. They're this the, this big offensive attack, but only because of each other. You know, you have to really give the credit to Kucherov, considering you know, and and a lot of it is watching the games. And I'm sure you guys have seen the highlights here and there. I mean, there was a play, I believe it was in Vegas the other night. Point scored a goal, one of two on the game, and Kucherov passed it while he was on his knees against the boards with three Knights defenders. Mm-hmm around him and that left point all by himself. And and I can't really sit here and confidently tell you who else would be able to make that pass in the league right now. Um, but yeah, you look at a lot of points goals this year. Uh, a lot of those assists they're coming from Kutroff and they're coming from great, very, very tough passes and spots on the ice. And, and that goes for a lot of players on this team. Ironically enough is that, you know, you look at the, a lot of their goals uh, if you want to spend an entire day, be my guest. But if you look at a lot of their goals, the secondary assist guy is Kucherov. And hmm. those are those are plays that I don't think any of the other guys really could make on a nightly basis uh, for this Lightning team. So, yeah, I mean, points having yeah. a good year because of Kucherov. But, you know, his whole season isn't based off of just because he's playing alongside this guy. But it, it's it's one of those things where you could go back and forth and, and really argue about it, is which is really the, <laughs> the, the long answer. Well, uh, you know, <clears throat> and it's almost like, you know, people don't want there to be like a Batman to a team's Robin. 
yeah. uh, you know, or or the or the other way around. They don't want there to be a Robin to a Batman either. And and you know, you guys have Kucherov and Point. Avs have uh, McKinnon and and Rantanen. And um, I, I I I hear I hear it more on the Tampa Bay side of like if Kucherov wasn't there, and that's true. That that's all true. But that's true for <clears throat> every team's best player. And that is true right now. This year, Nathan McKinnon is the Avalanche best player. And if he's not there, McKinnon, uh, <clears throat> uh, Miko Rantanen doesn't have the season that, that he is having right now. And you, you pull his stats away. And, and it, 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 yeah, I mean, again, and Miko Rantanen is like Braden Point. He's a great player. Um, would, would he have a great season without Nathan McKinnon? Sure would. Sure would. Would it be? You know, uh, Miko Renton is having a sneaky good season. What's he at? Like ninety six points right now, Kyle. Yeah, can so, you can you hear me? We can. Go ahead. Yep. No, nope, now we can. <laughs> I think it's about. <laughs> this, is, this is Bieber. I know. Um, so, <laughs> Miko, um, Miko Rant early. Now it's buzzing again. No, it's I I don't know what is going on in Kyle's Kyle's audio today. Good lord. But, yeah, I had to mute you, Kyle. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to mention, you know, Tampa Bay. I mean, I had this up. They have two, three. They have five guys that are over 60 points, while the Avalanche have three. And uh, McKinnon, Miko Renton, and Kale McCarr. Take that for what it's worth. I, I, I know, you know, so is, is that... Does that tell the whole story? No, because it's, you know, uh, Nachuskin's been out a bunch of games this year because he went into the player program. He'd be up there. So there there are kind of like asterisks to that. But you look at that and you're like, okay, the spreading of the points is a little bit more even on the Tampa Bay side than it is for the Avalanche side. Well, I will tell you, Chris, real quick, um, yeah. and then we'll wrap it up with a quick question for both of you. Yeah. Um, all those players that you mentioned, including Hedman, have all regularly shared ice time with common theme Nikita Kucherov. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and 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 any Lightning fan could tell you that Hedman got off to a, a horrendous start to this season, uh, to where we were really talking about possibly him being washed up. And as you know me, Chris, I was having the Stam Coast trade talk relatively early as well. <laughs> so you know, you, you look at the effect that he has on all the guys on this team, and we already talked about Point. Uh, Hagel as well. Hagel's having another phenomenal season. That's all in part sure. to, due to 86. And and the thing that I think that really makes it great f and, and stands out past in even from past years for 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 Kucherov, even from his MV, his last MVP season in 2019, is that he's he's playing a full 200 foot game and that's something you really don't see. haven't really seen that much out of him because obviously with injuries, but I mean, he's, he's, he's playing defense, man. I, I mean, huh. and, and I'm not saying that, you know, McKinnon's McKinnon's a horse. We've seen it firsthand too, as well. Sure. He, he, he's not afraid to go out there and lay out big hits. Uh, but Kucherov, you know, going out and trying to hit the biggest guy on the other team. I mean, he, I, I believe he tried to lay a couple of I, one of the games that really stood out to me this this uh, past couple of months was really the game against the Rangers where he was going out there. You know, thank thank goodness he didn't. But, you know, there was he he looked like he was ready to go up against Rempe that night. And, you know, <laughs> for a guy I love that who's you know, who scores like that and doesn't really need to do all that yet. He's going out there and playing gritty. I mean. It, it has a different flavor, this possible MVP season for, for Lightning fans. And I think that's why they're, we're so headstrong on his case being heard. Because, as you know, we never feel like the mass media and NHL is really ever paying attention to Tampa Bay. Oh, 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 we, we share that. <laughs> we share that <laughs> in the Colorado world. I, um, I'm looking up on, on NHL Edge right now, just comparing the, them. And, just in, and this is not something that I'm saying is taken into the equation. I think it's just the different play styles that you see. And we, you know, we know Nathan McKinnon as the guy who's, you know, the, the speed demon. And as far as uh, 20 to 22 mile an hour speed burst, McKinnon has 512 compared to Nikucherov's 134. 
and over 22 miles an hour. McKinnon has 106 compared to Kucherov's 12. And I'm not bringing that up to say like that, that's, you know, that should weigh in, in the heart conversation. I'm saying that's the different play styles in these guys. Yeah. And it's almost a Kucherov's advantage. And the best, I think it was, uh, it was I think it was Elliot Friedman or, or it might've been Jeff Merrick who said it like Kucherov, like will like lull you to sleep and then attack. And just when you think like he's out of, he's taking himself out of the game. He's taking himself out of the game. He's just, Chris is frozen. Every, Can you hear uh, everybody me? Everybody from Locked On Avalanche is having issues tonight. Can you uh, hear me? Yeah, I could hear you. You're good, so, okay. Kyle. Go and ahead. He's back. Well, well, you, well, and real quick, while I got my mic alive again, <laughs> my earlier point: Mika Rantanen is sitting at sixth in the league in points. When you're mm -hmm. talking about accessories to these heart potential winners, Mika Rantanen sixth in the league. Brain point is thirteen. Like you can't have a Batman without a Robin, and mm -hmm. Honestly, like Leon Dreisaitl is that for Connor McDavid. So you you can't be that powerful without a little bit of assist. And when you're talking about Cooch and his defense, Nathan McKinnon has learned a little bit of that from last year because it felt like last year Nathan McKinnon put the entire team on his shoulders. It tried to be Kucherov last year. And there was a lot of turnovers that you didn't see Nathan McKinnon typically make. And he had to account for those. And you're seeing Nathan McKinnon in spots like the Wayne Gretzky quote of skating to where the puck's going to be, you're seeing Nathan McKinnon taking a lot of that, those moves and that approach this year. And it feels like he's taking that next step. So watching Kucherov taking that next step, it's like they're making lateral moves on opposite sides of the divisions in the league. So it's a fascinating mm -hmm. watch all, all the way across. Yeah, that, yeah. That's a, that's a good observation, Kyle. And before, since all our technologies are working at once right For now, now. ask you guys one last question. <laughs> I'll let you guys get out of here. Yeah. Uh, starting with you, Kyle, if you don't have a Nathan McKinnon, if you don't, if you just have an average player, like I said, with our guys, player X, average Joe hockey, where is this avalanche team out in the West right now? They're probably sitting in third. Chris? Yeah. Um, uh, a third or or a wild card i'd say yeah yeah and, and that's i think it's just because the other teams you know dallas is such a strong team winnipeg is having a very good season i think they're they're overachieving uh but they're having a great year so if those two if those two teams still had the season that they had and you have an, a mckinnon -less avalanche team um you're fighting with uh kind of an upstart nashville team right now so yeah i think you're fighting for the third spot in the division or the first wild card i, yep. I think that's how much it, you know i, I what could they come man I, it, it'd be tough to say that they could be up where they are right now uh, you couldn't really say that i mean even though they have a lot of other very solid players on their team um yeah uh, it, it'd be in that realm i would say he's, he's that important yeah. all right guys well we'll we have a couple but a couple more months to go before we truly find out you know who's gonna have the heart trophy at the end of this year and uh good luck to you guys maybe we'll see you in the playoffs and hey. uh if not uh we'll Did we'll go can. beat vegas for you in the stanley cup final but uh <laughs> make sure yeah, to go worked. ahead what was that kyle it worked great for us last time let's do it again <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah payback right so right Make sure everybody to go ahead and listen to Locked On Avalanche as their season winds up. You know, stay tuned for all the Nathan McKinnon talk. Guys, tell uh, my listeners where you could find your show. Uh, Twitter, L-O-P-N underscore Avalanche. And then uh, Locked On Avalanche on Instagram as well. Kyle has his own uh, Twitter page, which is at Shaggy Von Doom everywhere you look. It. Beautiful. Yeah, make sure everybody to go to their Twitter pages and just blow up their mentions about how they're wrong about everything. And Nikita Kucherov is more valuable than Nathan McKinnon. Oh, so, you guys are going to be so disappointed. <laughs> so thank you for jumping on, guys. I really appreciate it. Anytime, sir. Yeah, it's fun.